Reach for the sky. What is up, Cowboys? It is Saran, the Crypto Bandit, here today with you guys. Aaron has taken a little snooze, and I'm here with you guys. Today we're having an AMA. We are with today one of the team members of Clean Ocean, and we'll be taking a look at this project, seeing if it's worth our time, our energy, and our money. What better way than to do that than through these AMAs? It is amazing that we can just sit down with these team members and we can just get a conversation going because you know here in the wild, wild west of crypto with our lizard brains, our gorilla arms, and our diamond hands, that when we're sifting through all these telegrams and YouTube videos and discords that we're just getting the second hand and third hand and dirty cousin information. It is amazing when we can have the developer of the project here to talk about it in the flesh. Always remember that nothing that we say here is financial advice. And that if you want to be a part of a like-minded community of lizard and people like me and Aaron, that you can join us on the Telegram, the Saloon. That is where we get all these conversations going, where we're looking out for good projects and where we can just discuss and just be with people like us on that journey to one Bitcoin, all right? So today we have Jan here and he will be with Clean Ocean. Oh, Clean's Ocean. And he'll be talking about his project. All right, man, how you doing? What's up, man? Not Clean Ocean was perfectly right. And yeah, great to be here. <laughs> yeah, man, it is awesome to have you. Just like I said earlier, it is wonderful when we can just sit down and we can talk with the developer in these projects and get the real first-hand account and information. It is wonderful. Yeah. So just tell us a little bit about yourself. How like how did you get into crypto? What's going on? Yeah, sure. So first of all, like I think like channels like this are so important nowadays. Like everyone's just like throwing out their not financial advice here and there, <laughs> and mm -hmm. but it's. Uh, I think it's so important to like talk directly to people and to people who are actually also willing to sit in front of a camera because I think that's something that lacks in crypto a lot. Um, so for my personal background, I'm coming from uh, studying business myself and uh, also all my family. I just uh, am very happy to have my cousin Daniel, who's like the main developer of the whole thing. So it was very easy to us to get together from the business and technological side. Mm -hmm. um, I got, got like, of course, as everyone probably in, in crypto through Bitcoin, um, it always starts in the same way, right? So, yeah, um, got probably in Bitcoin, not gonna lie, uh, could have bought my first ones when it was below $10. So I'm, I'm in this thing. Oh, for some no. <laughs> was too, I was a bit too young at that point to understand fully the, co the mm -hmm. full concept. But uh, yeah, I, I'm in this, uh, this whole rabbit hole for quite a while, I would say at this point. So yeah yeah i think i yeah. first came onto like bitcoin in 2011 i had like just graduated yeah. high school and i was like man what is this ah oh, this is too complicated i'm worrying about college yeah. and all other types of crazy stuff <laughs> but if i would have just taken the time age. man hmm? <laughs> Someone, sorry, uh, someone told me about it on a vacation and he was like telling me about how he's mining this magic internet currency. And I'm like, yeah, sure, magic. bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, legitimately, when oh, I wow. first heard about it, it was, it was, it was almost like gibberish. I was like, Bitcoin, <laughs> internet currency. No, that's, that's never going to yeah. do anything. Fast forward, legitimately 10 years later on that's an scary. AMA with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all like, goes, right? That's all goes. I think it's like amazing, like where Bitcoin has come and even where it can take us. So, like, all right, so we got your little back, we have your backstory. Like, tell us a little bit about the coin, name of the coin, what you're trying to do. Sure. So, uh, basically, Clean Ocean is, um, is a project that we really started. I think everyone says this. I'm not going to repeat the sentence. Everyone says we started this from our heart because it's really a project. Um, we try to change something in the real world. I think crypto is amazing because it does so much in the digital world and now there's this whole metaverse trend. Um, when we started Clean Ocean, there was, uh, at this point, there was a small trend evolving in the BSC space about this whole uh, ecological projects and um, this whole uh, charity projects as well. And we were like thinking, this is, this is pretty amazing to do something with this huge amounts of money that are involved in crypto and putting them in a direction where it really matters. In this world and so um, we started basically like the, the first ocean cleanup coin and um, I think this idea has been like kind of copied a, a lot since then which is like of course just a proof that it's a good idea I would say so we're not really 
touched by this in a negative way. The space is big enough for everyone to exist so far still, mm -hmm. but yeah. basically we just started with the idea that uh, we we thought that this, uh, these kind of charity tokens that evolved, those eco projects, um, mm -hmm. are pretty, pretty fucking amazing. And we wanted to, to do something in the space as well and bring some money from crypto to the outside world. And now we evolved to a point where we already talk about like building our own circular economy uh, economic systems like that basically for everyone who doesn't know what it means it's just like recycling but better to make something being able to be used and used over again basically plastic that is thrown a used thrown away in the ocean you pick it up again you know like plastic on the ground on the beach it's basically like harvesting some some material and if you pick it up and you can use it again and do maybe do bottles or some other products again and you keep it spinning the wheel and in this way you create something circular like that's the most basic sense of explaining this this is basically one of our goals we are achieving at the moment with many projects worldwide from africa to um to asia um okay including india but yeah that's basically like the so i, I can i could go talk about this for hours but yeah that's basically so how does I how so i heard like so it's an eco project to help clean up the yeah. oceans and stuff like that from africa to wherever else you're going but how does so how does clean ocean and the coin itself help to accomplish that goal yeah so i think back then when we started it was not something so normal you really had to explain this i think nowadays everyone who has been uh, who has touched the bsc space knows about this kind of tokenomics thing that's going on like where mm -hmm. you collect fees with your tokens and from that fees um you, you basically fund the operations and uh, do all of these things. So traders mm -hmm. have a huge advantage because, uh, of course, also these fees prevent bots from in, inflating the project. So this is uh, also a small good thing there. But in general, just those fees, um, I mean, this, this concept was always there, like with eBay using transaction uh, fees and uh, making money through volume. And I think this is just the evolution of these things through crypto. And this is the way mm -hmm. how we collect money for our operations, for marketing, spiraling up the token price through that. Um, and using some so of that talk, money. So it's just basic tokenomics. Yeah. And then through that, you guys are giving back, I guess, to help yeah. clean up. So are you guys finding these organizations that are cleaning up the beaches? Or are you guys actually the organization that's like hiring yeah. the people and all that stuff to clean up the beaches and stuff like that? Uh, kind of both of it. We started by uh, donating very simply to get a name out there and to really like get things going. Like I think in the, on the first day, already in the first 24 hours, we did our first donation just to prove to people we are here for real. And mm -hmm. um, a bit later, we had our first uh, live stream collaboration with like the, the CEO of Sea Shepherd Germany, which is like a massive mm -hmm. organizational space. And it was a really exciting event. But we tried to, like not just trying, we are currently evolving from that point. Uh, to where we are deeply partnered with like um, cleanup organizations that wear our logo out there. You can, if you join our website and our telegram channels and all of that good stuff, you can see our task force. We call it the Clean Ocean Task Force being out mm -hmm. there under our umbrella, under our name, with our logo, like I said, out there cleaning up those those beautiful beaches. Okay. Um, so how long have you guys been operating? This is... Uh... This sounds like you guys have been going operating for a while. So have you guys been operating before you joined the crypto space or did everything start like rolling around the same time? No, it's, all, it's, a, it's a whole learning by doing process, you could say. Um, and we started with the crypto thing, but the, the project itself is also not that young, you could say, but also not that old. Mm -hmm. We're like around, uh, I think, scratching the eighth, uh, eighth month, a month right now. So okay. um, trying to finish off our first year here. Which uh, I think is a is a good good time spent to be in. Like it proves that you're a legit project, but you're also not too old to be like some yeah I don't know burn out thing. So yeah, yeah, that's basically where we are right now. I mean, to eight months is not bad. A lot of projects burn out the same day. They don't even make it class past IDL really. A lot, <laughs> a lot of pro a lot of projects die die in the rooms they were created. To tell you the truth, to tell you the truth. It is so how is. many people? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Especially in the BSD space, it's a whole. It, it is how it is. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how many people are like on your team that are core members? Who are you in the company? Are you guys mm -hmm. all doxed? Like, so come on, give me yeah. some. Yeah, so uh, we take this whole thing really serious, like really serious. That's why I think it wasn't the first week of operating. We doxed like the whole team, not 
not even people that we would have to dox, like um, just to get myself out there personally. Like I'm the I'm basically what you would call the CEO of the project, the, the okay. project leader. And um, we, but we didn't only dox me. We dox like the whole team. Like many people just dox everyone who has like access to the main walls. We doxed everyone to show that like we are proud of what we're doing, not just to prove a point, but to really show like we stand behind what we're doing because we're proud of this shit. And um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to be as so, transparent as possible, especially when you're, yes, especially when you say you're like, um, oh, this is a charity coin, and this much of my money is going to charity. I feel like it's very important to be as honest with who, who is the person yeah. receiving and taking in these funds, if that makes sense. Yeah. Also, just if you go to any big company website, you usually find the whole leaderboard there on the website, and not just like, hey, this is our CEO, and you don't know anyone else. Here. <laughs> this is very true. When I used to work at Comcast. You could go all, there was a tree and you can go all the way up it from me and you can work all the way up it and anyone can do that. So you go from the CEO of Comcast and go down a thousand different levels and then you'd see my little yeah, face right. as a salesman. <laughs> yeah, no, that's legit. Yeah, we, we, we're just trying to operate like a real company out there. Like, um, we really want to don't do it like and like just some Reddit crypto project. We really want to operate like a like a real startup, you might say, that is uh, taking mm -hmm. this thing more serious than just um, pushing out some marketing there, pumping the coin here and there, but really doing this for the long term and trying to make some change. And I know many say this, but I think with the time we devoted in this and the work, we proved at least to our community by now that uh, we are actually behind what we're doing. Okay. So what is the tokenomics of the coin? Yeah. So that's actually... Really, really interesting. It would have been a very easy question um, just some weeks ago, but we're doing mm -hmm. a migration right now from the old contract to the new one. Um, okay. There will be a really huge launch party on the 8th. I don't know exactly when this video comes out, probably like on the 7th or something. If it comes on, out on the 7th, you guys watching this are the luckiest people in the world because this launch party will be insane. Um, <laughs> launch party? Wait, <laughs> yeah, literally launched by it will be crazy. Like what what we have planned for this is way above the head of like I think we are around one million market cap right now. It's much over that. Like we we also invested a lot of personal funds in there to make this like mm -hmm. something that is way too crazy for such a small project just for the heck of it, basically. But um, so because of this migration, we completely changed uh, the whole structure of this project. And like we upgraded okay. every aspect. So tell me, Before, tell me if yeah. what the old tokenomics used to be, I guess, and then tell me the new one. Yeah. So the old ones used to be basically like the, the typical safe moon fork, you might say it, like mm -hmm. with like um, five percent liquidity and five percent um, reflection, and then there's a huge dev wallet that receives reflections that can be used for all these operations. But of mm -hmm. course, like that is. Um, this contract had security issues and all of that, and many reasons to to switch. The new ones are a bit more. Um, bit more complex, but also in a sense, because we're going to adapt them. We um, chose to, to have um, a, a liquid system where we can uh, always change the tokenomics in a sense that we can adapt to the market, um, but we hard coded uh, security measurements in there. So the tokenomics, the, the, the fees you might call, can never go above, I think, 20 or 30 percent. So never too high. And of course, we never intend to put them that high. But 20 and 30 is very high. <laughs> That's very high. That's very high. Yeah. But um, it's it's uh, it's a security measurement so that it can't be honey potted. Like you know, we can't put them like you saw many projects getting hacked or the dev team did some something ridiculous and put them to hundred uh, percent, mm -hmm. letting the contract be implode. So we put in enough flexibility that there there is measurements to be taken if uh, some market situation um, allows it. But um, yeah. Uh, never too high that every, anyone could has to fear for their, their funds or something. But basically, so to break it down, the new, talk, sorry, the new mm -hmm. tokenomics are uh, for buying, I think, around 10% uh, and for selling around 12%. Okay. For buying, it's 5%. For selling, it's 12%. So, like, how much of that is to marketing? Like, come on, like, break it down. Um, so, we put around, I think... We, we have like a two to two system where um, I'm saying around 10% because it's uh, around the highest that we go for for buying. Uh, but mm -hmm. usually we do 2% um, of tokens that get in a wallet that uh, because we want to implement staking features later. So this wallet can be activated mm -hmm. and this uh, feature can be activated and deactivated at any point to collect 2% of a fee for tokens. Um, mm -hmm. Then it 
then a two percent, um, around two percent marketing fee. So, which is basically what everyone's interested in, uh, which will be added in BUSD, um, just because the contract can sell much more efficiently than a, a human could uh, without interrupting mm -hmm. the chart. Um, mm -hmm. Then I think it's two percent liquidity. We um, we thought about this because it's uh, we already have so much liquidity. We don't need to put it higher at the moment. Maybe we're gonna turn it off at some point uh, completely and uh, a two percent reflection at the moment. But like I said, we're gonna just we're gonna use this uh, around this tokenomics for the launch to uh, test every function out uh, a lot and then uh, use this data that we get to it to yeah work from there. Okay, so you're saying you're so you're moving it from this V one essentially where yeah. the tokenomics are set into V2, where it's more fluid. In what type of situation, I guess you'd say, where you would drop the, the buy-in and buy-out tax, and what kind of situation would you be in where you would yeah. raise it? So if there's like a lot of volume, um, a, a volume that's so high that, um, that we, we say we can, for example, like just put the marketing fee like a percent or two percent higher to collect more funds to build up on that volume, because otherwise you, you need to keep momentum. So if momentum mm -hmm. is there, you need to create funds to keep that momentum. Um, and in this kind of situation, we would, uh, for example, hire the marketing fee. Um, and maybe lower like something, uh, something else like liquidity or something, whatever, but um, we would collect more money uh, in this sense to build up on this momentum because then it's important. We would, for example, lower the fees for them, special events. You could like call it like, like some Black Friday offers or something like this where we would just say, hey, today is a 0% buy fee uh, for something like this, uh, for example. And um, yeah, just uh, to, for new people to get in, just having the ability to create those kind of events. Okay. so. When, when you guys adjust the tokenomics, how, do you, mm -hmm. how would someone know if it got adjusted? Like, are you going to also update it on your website? Is there like a live tracker that says, yeah. hey, guys, the tokenomics at the current moment is this, 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 this. Hey, guys, tomorrow, are you guys adjusting it on a daily basis after analyzing mm -hmm. like the day's chart? Are you adjusting it on an hourly basis? So like, I just want, I'm, I guess my question really is, is like, how are you determining really and truly when to adjust the tokenomics because if all of a yeah. sudden you're just like all right we want more money for marketing 10 percent no. <laughs> like you get what i'm saying no, like how no, are you no, determining no. like all right we want more marketing okay guys we want more liquidity okay guys you know what we want more to be burned because like what a lot of these rug pulls and stuff that's happening i guess what i'm trying to get at is that yeah. It, in this sense, you could just wake up and say, all right, guys, 20% marketing. And then every transaction that day, 20% is going to marketing and people are just getting yeah. like burned, like and gypped as they're going along. So like with my lizard yeah. brain, I just want to understand like yeah. how the fluctuating of the token benefits the yeah. coin really and truly. And how I guess me as a potential holder would be protected from some just arbitrary like 20% to marketing like change. Exactly. So um, I really love this question as actually because it's so important. That's what I said why this kind of channels and this kind of videos are so important to really talk about also topics like this and not just make it a full advertisement video, right? And just talk about the, the good things of crypto and these things. So of course, this is there is always the potential that um, a team that has uh, a not renowned contract could technically do this. That's why we uh, took eight months to take a huge step like this. That's why we announced ownership in the beginning, locked everything we could just to prove the point to people that we are here for the project um, and that we work our way uh, along this. And that's also why we hard coded in those uh, safety measurements um, so that people will always know, okay, it can, it can never be like a complete honeypot or whatever. Of course, mm -hmm. There is, and I'm just going to say this honestly, like there is always, if you don't know the dev team, you can all, it's completely legitimate to ask yourself, okay, why should I trust a project that could uh, make the fees in this way? Um, I think it's important to look at it from a bit of a different perspective. First of all, we never did, I, that's also just what I can say about our project. We never did something uh, like this without communicating to the community, like never. Literally everyone in our community um, will know that and everyone, uh, if someone from our community is here watching the video, you can, can just confirm it in the comments. 
Um, we never do something without talking to the people a lot, making votes about things, and for like maybe the smallest things to talk at least to the top holders. We have a have a group for that with our top fifty holders, and to talk at least to them before we implement changes. Um, mm -hmm. That is really important to us because, like I said, we want to build a legitimate project on this. Otherwise, we wouldn't have like gotten this these partnerships um, with those people where we actually hire people uh, that are like in those. Um, those social situations where they uh, where they need uh, need to find some kind of work because like, like the whole COVID situation, all of that many people lost their job, and in those areas we hire people right now to um, to pick up like this uh, the the beaches, the trash and stuff like this there to clean up there, and um, we call us like uh, with our partners we call us like social cleanups, and we wouldn't go all this route just to like then and at some point say like bye bye, but of course everyone can say that that's why everyone needs to do their research these things and yeah. that's why we want to appear on videos like this to talk to people and mm -hmm. to show them that we are like for real as much as we can and um yeah but of course that's um completely legitimate question and um but the funny thing is this has never come up from our com community once during all the amas that we did before that because they really know us by now and they they trust us so but yeah i completely okay. understand from it's not been a project Awesome. Mm -hmm. like this. But yeah. All right. Because, yeah, because that tokenomic structure is built upon trust. I'm telling yeah, you, because I I, 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 I think it's kind of weird to change yeah, the contract in that way. But if you're seeing that there's a benefit from that, I mean, if you, it's no, your, no, your I, coin. I so, but I think the, a, a structure where you can just adjust the tokenomics on like a whim, I think it's very weird. Yeah, we put a lot of flexibility in this whole thing. Also, um, for example, to go even further, because I'm going to be really transparent and honest about this, uh, we also put in functions where we can, uh, we have the liquidity pool split up in BNB and BUSD to, um, mm -hmm. for example, adapt to crashes. So we can change it in BUSD uh, with a higher ratio if necessary. So we're not affected from BNB crashes so much. Those are all systems that are heavily built on trust. But otherwise, you can't build a real company on top of this. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you need in a company you need flexibility you need to be able to adapt to situations otherwise you just have a floating contract maybe even a renounced ownership locked liquidity basically just a floating contract out there in the open and you can just try to to market this as long as it survives but you will not be able to form like long-term things out of this uh, and many actually realize this now that's why um that's why SafeMoon, as much as I'm concerned, is migrating. Other big, uh, um, big projects in our sector, like um, to just to name some, SPE just did a migration with uh, also very similar outcome um, mm -hmm. in their new tokenomics and all of this stuff. Many trusted projects go this route now because it's the only way to build a long-lasting company on top of a smart contract. Okay. So earlier you talked about staking, and I was, yeah. I was curious on like, so are you guys trying to build like a swap? On top of Clean Ocean, a staking platform. What's the staking about? So we all already currently have have a swap. It's, um, we uh, built this like months ago when it was not so common. Like nowadays, many projects build a swap on top of that. Uh, when we did it, like in the beginning, it was not so the the most common thing in the world. And uh, mm -hmm. we upgraded that with the ability to uh, also over our swap buy BNB with uh, with credit card and with I think yeah also with bank transfer. This was very important for some certain time. I think it's still like Binance in some regions still doesn't accept um, bank transfer. It's also the the only like kind of really like we take the word clean swap seriously because from the the small fees I think the fee for the credit card payment for example like around three percent where uh, depends on where you're living. And I think 0.5% of that, uh, I don't have the exact numbers right now, right? but it should be around 0.5% go also towards ocean cleanup. So it's the, um, basically the, the cleanest way of uh, purchasing crypto if you like so. So we have this already installed and we want to build on top of CleanSwap, like some kind of like a clean farm or however we're going to call it. And we want, um, basically, we don't want to become the biggest staking platform here, but um, we got, first of all, asked by this, uh, about this from our community because they were literally asking, hey, Yam, can you make something like this? Because farms are amazing, but it's so hard to find a farm that you can actually trust. And mm -hmm. because many people um, trust us in that way, they would just love to have a farm, even if it doesn't have like the most crazy 5 million percent APIs, just some yeah. place where they can trust to put their money and farm some, some tokens. 
and also just because I personally love staking a lot. So I would love to have some kind of reward on top of the reflection for people who are holding. Just more utility for the coin is what you're saying. Yes. Is the staking exactly. and the swapping. That's why you added it to provide just more utility on top of it. So when yeah. you are, so when you're using that swap on your, the mm -hmm. native swap on the website, I'm assuming, and then back to this, the, to the fluctuating tokenomics, would it be affected on the swap if that day was at 20%? Like, um, that's just affecting the tokenomics, of course. So if you would trade our token over that swap, like, of course, like you would trade with the current uh, tokenomics. Mm -hmm. but like, just, I, I, I know it's just hyperbolic what you say, but like, just because I just want to make it clear for everyone listening, we never gonna put the fees to 20%. Like, literally, like, of course, okay. it's just like, you trust me, but it's just there for flexibility for whatever reason, just because we wanted to put some cap somewhere. Uh, but the fees are always going to be around 10%. Like that's everything okay. else is just too much. Is so on your current website, is there a list? So earlier, you also said that you guys do some of the cleanup as well as partner with other organizations. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have like a current list of other organizations in case let's say someone wanted to go back and fact check, because I think that with a lot of these humanitarian projects, I guess that's what we can call them. <laughs> what we can call them. It ha there has to be a certain level of trust. So yes. docs, the team, uh, any partners you have need to be listed. Anyone you've ever donated to needs to be listed. Also, especially with your situation with the fluctuating tokenomics, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse yes. <laughs> that you have wow. to be as transparent as possible. So do you have yes. like a list of charities that you have worked with before that people could essentially double check and fact check you on? Yeah, 100%. Um, on our website, there is like a, a tab for like the people we already donated to and partners. You can also always, if you don't want to uh, look around too long on the website, just text me and ask, hey, you, uh, can you send me the certificates really quick or something? Um, mm -hmm. For the donations, of course, we can always provide that. But also, if you want to fact check, like uh, from uh, from other sources that are not from us, you can just <clears throat> sorry go to uh, our partners that we listed. Go on the Instagram pages; they literally post photos from our cleanups with our logo on their vest. So you can also just check out their sources. But what you just said is like exactly what I, what I mean. Like, if you want to build like really a long term, um, that's why we're doing all those things. Uh, if you really want to build a long term project and long term company on this thing. Um, you really need this transparency. That's why we list everyone, the whole team on the site and not just three people or something. That's why we act as much as we can as a normal company out there would to show people like crypto can also be in this way and to, to run it like a real business. And like I said, not just like a, some random pump and dump token or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So is there anything out there that I guess we haven't covered that you want to let people know about you in terms of the company, about your team? Anything like that? Um, I think the the most exciting thing definitely is gonna be the the big um, relaunch. You might not call it relaunch, might just call it the migration or whatever on the on the eighth. Mm -hmm. And then right now we have on top of that going like we call it the advent, where we every day put out some kind of marketing. We do it strictly for the community. Um, like till at least the 24th, like till at least Christmas, we're going to every day put out some kind of marketing thing. Of course, the, the biggest banks are going to Did you say the advent? Like, yes. <laughs> so it's like advent, but like advent, yeah, but... <laughs> like advent caliber, but an ad event. That's pretty catchy. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I worked hard for that. Stayed up like 10 hours a night till I got it. Um, so... Yeah, we have this going on right now where we will want to deliver something, not just one, we have everything planned out. Um, we have the, the whole extra sheet and everything going. And uh, I think this, mm -hmm. for example, this video is some part of this, for example, and we want to deliver something to the community every day. And if this gets the reception that we uh, imagine it gets, like we will continue this after that. So um, because we believe, of course, even like that's something that people, I think, is a misconception about many eco projects and also think something eco project itself get wrong. 
even if you're doing that, you need to do the marketing. You need to get your word and your brand out there. And we uh, we spent the last month to build a really great foundation, like to build like the um, a great website, a great smart contract, and the, the team around it, and all the partners that we have now. We built an amazing foundation, and now it's time to really bring out the word out there about the brand and the, the whole project. Okay, man. I feel like you did a pretty good job of just explaining what the project is and just letting all of the cowboys out there and the bandits out there know what's going on. It's been wonderful to have you on this AMA. It was so wonderful. Thank you for coming onto this channel and just bringing that energy and that vibe and just your project. Yeah, thanks, man, for having me. And thank you for finally asking some, like, you can call it harder questions. Usually they're all so soft all the time. So, yeah, that was kind mm -hmm. of a new experience, but I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Remember, guys, always do your own research. Make sure to yeah. like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you remember that you can always join us in the saloon. We got the lizard brain, the gorilla arms, and the diamond hands. We are going through that wild, wild west of crypto on our way to the next Bitcoin. It was wonderful to have you guys here. Peace. Have a good one. Bye.